Hi, it's Tammy with Colored Valley Cooks. Today we're making something really simple. I had some creamed potatoes yesterday. I made um, the beef, chip beef over toast, and we always serve it with creamed potatoes and I had extra. So today we're going to fry up some potato cakes. I'm, I'm cutting up an onion right now, chopping it really small to go in them. And we're going to get this started. It's only going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn my skillet on and let it get hot because we'll have these mixed up in a snap. Okay? We're going to go ahead and put these onions in our batter bowl. Let's put our potatoes in there first. Here's our potatoes that were left from yesterday. We're going to put onions in them. I'll move this board out of the way so y'all can see better in a minute. Or you could just come around this way, Chris. Okay. So this is something y'all can do with your leftover mashed potatoes. Yep. All right, so the onion's in there. We're going to crack an egg and put in it. I'm going to put in some pepper. Salt. And the potatoes are already salted, but we put in more. I'm gonna mix it up really, really good. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of flour and we're gonna fry them up. So let's mix it. So you just use your cream potatoes. Now, not everybody uses onion and egg and all that, but I make them a little bit like I do my salmon patties, really. Except my salmon patties don't have that much onion in them. But potatoes are good with onion, of course. And you're doing something like this, especially. So it's got pl it's plenty moist. See how moist it is? Now we're going. If for some reason yours is really dry. You could add another egg, okay? So we're gonna hop away. Oh, I'm gonna throw some flour in it. This is my little eighth cup scoop. It's a heaping scoop. I'll probably put two of those in it. So it's gonna be about a quarter cup of flour. Not everybody puts flour in it either, but you know, everybody has their own way of doing stuff. This will just kind of help it fluff up a little bit, okay? So it'll make it more puffy in the skillet, that self-rising flour. So it'll make them rise a little bit. Nice and fluffy. And then if you want to add anything else, you can. But that's all we put in ours. We're going to hop over here. If you come around on the other side of them. And I have my little bacon grease container. Um, and we're going to put a little bacon grease at the bottom of the skillet. And it don't take a whole lot of grease. Let's see about how much that... Put a little more. It's probably about enough. And we can add some and a little bit if we need to. But for now, that's what we'll use. And then you're just going to, let me see how hot it is before I drop them. I want it to be nice and hot because I want it to sear them. It's hot, but I want it to be a little bit warmer. So we're just going to wait a couple. Oh my goodness, I'm burning my apples. I'm always burning something. Not really, but if I ever try to do anything, I'm, I was going to taste these apples. I was cooking them. I bought a different variety today than I normally do. We went down to the fruit stand. And I told Chris that I wanted to taste them and see how they tasted um, cooked before I make a cake out of them. And these are called grapefruit apples. They're actually pretty. Here, let me get something to put them in. Here, you can watch this, Chris, real quick. Let me get Okay. So we're just going to taste these apples and see what they taste like. I can't. Put this down on the counter. All right, that's mine up front. Let's turn this off. I was doing two things at one time. Sometimes you can't do that, especially when you're talking. We're gonna drop these, it's getting hot now. And 
you're going to flatten them out once they get nice and brown. I'm going to flatten them. That's probably enough in the pan because we're going to flatten some. I'm going to pick these up off my counter. Woo. I wanted to see what it tasted like before I made a cake out of it. They're called grapefruit. Grapefruit apples. Tastes pretty doggone good to me. And I didn't know if they would cook up quick and get soft fast or not for cake. So they look really good um, to me. That would make a good apple pie. Fried apple pie, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a good texture. I like the way it looks. We're going to make an apple skillet cake this week with them. That's what we're going to do. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to do, y'all. See if they're getting nice and yeah, they're getting brown. Just take them a minute to get brown, y'all. And then after you, when you flip them, you can smash them. I could go ahead and smash them a little bit. Let may ask about you using bacon grease because you don't normally. Well, just for this. Some things you use it for, some things you don't. And for these. You can use it, I mean, or not. I mean, you don't have to. But I just know a lot of people like them fried this way. And I I have a cooking show, so I thought I'd put some in there. Um, but now, if you don't want to use the bacon grease, use something else. But I thought I'd try some with bacon grease. And we usually don't have too many mashed potatoes left over anyway, or cream potatoes. No, nope. that's why I haven't done it. I mean, we never have cream potatoes <laughs> no. left. Most of the time I cut up one potato per person. When I do cream potatoes, I don't just cut up a bunch of potatoes. And so most of the time we have just enough to serve everybody. All right, let's go ahead and flip one side of them. First one. I don't think it's ready to flip. Gotta be a little patient. May actually have this one. If I can. Yeah. So we're frying up some potato cakes. Hope y'all are having a good Friday. We've already been to town and come back home and we're getting stuff done today. Went to the fruit stand. I know a lot of people are starting to go out to festivals and stuff. Get that time of year. If they're having them. I guess a lot of places have called them off. Yeah, they've still got a brown sun. See this little one we put in there looks good, don't it? Mm -hmm. This little tiny it's one. It's been in there a long time. Man. Look at that. My mama made these on my mama's side. Uh, I never saw Granny making them, my Granny B. But my mama on my mama's side did make potato cakes. Um, she sure did. She sure did. I got me a rutabaga. Do y'all like rutabagas? Now tell us if you like them, and tell us if you like potato cakes too. Um, I think I can flip this one right here now. That's more like it. That's more like it right there. You want them to be nice and brown and crunchy so that they hold their shape. And if you don't put the flour in them, they do fall apart a little bit more easy too. I guess I could have got them even drier. It worked. Who we got today, Chris? People from everywhere. Had one from Texas saying it's 70 degrees out there today. Of course, Texas is really big. I think they said North Texas, 70 degrees. 
We're about 70 something degrees here. We're today. 77, really I think it was, when we yeah. were in the car. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, we love it when it starts cooling off. Makes mm -hmm. you want to go outside, sit on the porch, and fish, right, Eddie? Yep. We don't fish on the weekends, though. It's too crowded. I went yesterday, so I didn't go today. There's a lot of people going because that water temperature and the air temperature is getting right. I know it's a lot cooler in other parts of the country. You said in one person says Memphis is 60. Oh, really? Yep. Wow, that is cool, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Somebody asked about your iron skillet, what brand it is. Is that a lot? Lord, this one is so old. It's all the pieces on the bottom. It is old as the hills. I don't know. I don't even know where I got it. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how long I've had it. But there is definitely not a sign on the bottom of it. So it's mm -hmm. not a lodge or anything like that. Um, so I don't really know what kind it is. To me, an iron skillet's an iron skillet, as long as you take care of it right. As long as you season it. But mine's old. I mean, it's slick as a slick as a button on the bottom. And if you heard that music, that's our doorbell. Yeah, I guess that's a delivery. If they ring again, I'll go check it. It's probably a delivery. We get a delivery or two every once in a while. Oh okay. yeah. Let's turn this one back over since it didn't get too brown on that side. Yeah. And put in another one. That one looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked about seasoning cast iron. We do have a video about that if you want to look it up. About All how, I did is put a little oil in it. Yeah, about how we take care of our cast iron you're interested in looking at that yeah all I do is put a little oil in it I'm on this time I'm not gonna smash that until it's nice and crunchy on the bottom and I'm gonna flip it and smash it I think they do better that way instead of going ahead and smashing them mm -hmm. um, but anyway yeah all I do with my iron skillets is I wash them just like I do everything else except when I rinse them out I rinse them with really hot water bring them over here to the stove top I put them on the stove and turn it on and let it get bone dry, you know, with heat under it. And then I take a little bit of my olive oil and I just rub it around on it. And if it needs, if it's got a good coating on it, you don't need to do anything else. That's all you need to do. If you, if you need to put a little bit more of a coating on it, then you rub the oil on there and you put your eye or your element on a, a medium low heat and let it sit for about 15 minutes. It's good. Tastes like breakfast. <laughs> when you make them in this um, bacon grease, they really do. They taste like... It reminds me of, you know, hash browns. Eating hash browns and bacon together. That's what it reminds me of. And really, I mean, they, you know, that's what they are, is hash browns. Yeah. Basically. Now, I put olive oil. I'm going to put a little olive oil in these. Instead of the bacon Instead grease. Instead of the bacon grease. Now, you're not going to... The only thing about using bacon grease is that's the main reason I don't use it. Is when you use bacon grease, that's all you taste. I mean, you literally... When you eat these, you mostly taste the bacon grease, okay? Which tastes good. Which tastes good, <laughs> but if you want to taste the potato and the onion, yeah. use, you know, oil. Because you ain't going to taste the potato and onion very much when you've cooked it in a, you know, in the bacon grease. All right, this time I'm going to flip this one. See? And now we're going to smash it. 
and I'll probably have to flip it again. That's all there is to it. It's easy, ain't it? Easy peasy, breezy, and they're delicious. You want to eat one, Chris? Sure. Here, I'll eat the rest of this one, or I'll eat another bite of this one. Boy, they're hot though. Okay. That first one I got out. They're asking our favorite kind of fish to eat and catch. Uh, probably speckled sea trout. I know Tammy's. She'll well, get this up close. Our favorite, and it really is flounder to eat. Pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let you taste it. Oh, okay. You can taste the onions some, because they're big onions. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, I put a lot in there. Yeah. Here, let me start with two. Mm. What do you think, Dad? Good stuff. All right, here you go. I don't think that bacon grease is too strong because you don't. The onion does. Chris likes it. The onion does give it some flavor. Get, yeah, I mean you can now, like she said, if you want it milder, if you really want to taste the potato, you can start use the bacon grease. Yeah. But you gotta have some in the bottom of the skillet to get them nice and brown. Mm -hmm. And it does soak up some of the oil. So it ain't a healthy, healthy thing to eat. Nope. When the oil disappears, <laughs> you know it's going in the food. <laughs> yeah, it don't uh, evaporate. No. <laughs> See how this one looks. Yeah. Nice potato cake. They sure get big after you flatten them, don't they? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's all, there, that's all there is to it. And and like I said, we got these apples a few minutes ago at our local fruit stand. And um, these were called red grapefruit apples. And I just cooked them up just a few minutes in the skillet and uh, wanted to taste them. Mm. To see what kind of texture they had after they're cooked, because apples change after they're cooked. And you never know if they're gonna be a tough, if they're gonna be tart, if they're gonna be sweet, how they're gonna be. It's not real tart, so when I make my cake, um, we'll probably post that this week, it's a apple skillet cake, it's one of my favorites. One of my favorite apple cakes is the apple skillet cake. And um, so I might add a little bit of lemon juice to give it just a little bit more tartness, but we'll see you then. Thanks for watching Frying Up Potato Cakes. We'll get this one. Let's flip this for them before we leave. With Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook, like Mama did. Bye, I love ya.